Hello, and welcome to part one of this Getting Started with Power Mill Guide. My name is Daniel Malloy, and I'm a Manufacturing Technical Specialist with CADPRO Systems in New Zealand. The purpose of these tutorials is to introduce new users to Power Mill, so no prior experience is required. However, I will be including a number of tips and tricks as we go through to hopefully aid existing users and improve their workflow. In this first lesson, we're going to cover the user interface, file import, and part setup. So essentially the preparation work needed before we can begin to machine our component. So without any further ado, let's get into it. The user interface for PowerMill is broken up into five main sections. Up at the top, we have our ribbon toolbar, over on the left hand side we have our explorer slash browser window. Down at the bottom we have our status bar. Over on the right hand side we have our viewing options and the rest of the space is taken up by the interactive graphics window. Next we're going to import a file. To do this pick the file drop down menu from the ribbon, select import, model, this then brings up our model import window. Using the drop down menu at the bottom of the screen, we can select the type of file we wish to import. PowerMill can import a large range of file formats. I usually just select all files from the bottom of the list. From here, select PM Training Part 01.igs. There will be a link in the description for below where you can download this part. Once we have that selected, Go ahead, press open, and PowerMill will import the file for us. Once the file is imported, we can use the view cube at the top right hand corner of the graphics window to manipulate the view. We can also use the viewing options on the right hand side of the screen. To zoom in and out of the model, we can scroll using the mouse wheel. To orbit around the part, press the middle mouse button in and drag. Once we're done playing with the view controls, use the view cube to switch back to an isometric view. Next, we're going to set up our stock. To do this, come up to the ribbon toolbar and select Block. There are a number of different styles of block that we can create. For now, I'm just going to stick with Box. Set the coordinate system to the global transform. Now, I'm just going to press the Calculate button. This will create our stock the same dimensions as the part. From here, I can come up to the limit section and fine tune the stock size. In this case, by adding two millimeters to the Z height so that we've got some material to face off. Once we've done that, we can press accept and that's our block created. We can see in the graphics window that my origin is in the center of the part, two millimeters below the top of the stock. So what I'm gonna do is create a new coordinate system on the bottom left corner of the block. To do this, I come up to my ribbon toolbar, pick the drop down menu under the create work plane icon and select work plane positioned on block. We can now select the bottom left corner of the model. Note that the work plane has been created. From the explorer, I can expand the work plane section and see the work plane we just created. Double click this work plane to make it active and note how the graphics window updates. This can also be done by right clicking the work plane and selecting activate. This concludes the first tutorial. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.